was a strange noise. That should be the last one. Oh, I guess it was a, yay, you completed it, sort of, noise. A slot for some kind of container. Ooh, I know, we can put it in a bucket. Aw, no. It says, mixture not complete, failed to inject sample. Alright, I believe it said it doesn't matter what order you put it in, right? Um, let's be sure, <laughs> let's be sure of that before we do it. Antidote. Okay. Actually, hold on. Before I tackle this, I will be right back. Alright, let's take this thing on. Okay. So I already know I have them all, because it told me I have them all. Chemicals will automatically be stored in the order listed above. Okay. So all chemicals should be combined. Mm hmm. Then you up, you insert the substance into the container slot. Alright, then you need to mix them in a certain order. So before we mess with that, let's just put everything in. This is all compounds present. Analysis completed. Success. All right. Put the substance into here. The screen reads compounds and substance present. Please input com uh, compound mixture order. Philip, let me live. Fuck you. You'll never do it. You don't have the balls. Go on, I dare you. You're some coward, four-limbed freak. You barely evolved out of the swamp. You haven't got it in yet. I know there's a chance that it won't work. You see, I knew you wouldn't do it. That puts me in the steering wheel now. Ha! Ho Silver! There's a chance it'll kill me. There's a chance it won't work. I'm gonna take that chance. Alright, now the order. Okay, but which button represents what? I, does it tell me? It doesn't seem to tell me which one's which, so... Oh, wait, wait, wait. This will automatically be sorted in that order, right? Hold on. Automatically sorted. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, so... Oh, shit. Um, Here we go. I need to turn my paper over. I need more room. Alright, so it's going to be sorted in this order. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Chlorine, acetone, or acetone, iodine, bromine. Nitrogen and sulfur. Okay. Wait, did I just write down the wrong ones? Oh, God damn it, I wrote down the wrong ones. Oh, no, I wrote down the order it's supposed to be in. <sighs> okay. Let's try, <laughs> Let's try that again. Chlorine, sulfur, iodine, nitrogen, bromine. All right, that's that's fine actually. That did, that did save me some writing. I was gonna have to kind of write that out anyway, I think. So that here, I'll, that's what's the order supposed to be on the right is what the order is. Okay, so. First one is acetone, which is number two. Next one is chlorine, which is number one. Next one is sulfur, which is number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next one is iodine, which is number three. Next one is nitrogen, which is number five. One, two, three, four, five. Next one is bromine, which is number four. One, two, three, four. Compound mixture failed. Wait, what? I was so sure of myself. 
Okay, stored in that order. Acetone, chlorine, sulfur, iodine, nitrogen, bromine. Yep. These be mixed. Chlorine, acetone, iodine, bromine, nitrogen, and sulfur. Did I do the wrong ones? I think I... Did I... Oh my god. This is a mess. This is a mess. I'm writing another note. Okay. I think I did the wrong one. Again. I didn't write the wrong one. I just read the wrong one because I wrote it in a very awkward way. That's the mix. That's the order. So it needs... It's chlorine first. Chlorine is number two. Acetone first. Uh, next. Acetone is number one. Sulfur. No, 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 no. Wrong, wrong. Iodine is next. I'm reading the wrong one again. Iodine is next. Iodine is number four. One, two, three, four. Bromine is next. That's the last one. Nitrogen is next. That's one from the last. And sulfur, which is three. Mixture completed. Please insert sample tissue. Okay. Here we go. Fuck you, Clarence. Finally. Finally. Yeah, but did it actually work? It seems like it did, but I'm not gonna bet on it. The hell do I do now? Oh. Why did that door just explode? I guess just to make it easier to get out, that is convenient. What a pretty body. Um, did he just transfer over into the body on the fucking table? He did! Oh god. Um. Fuck you. Oh god. He is eating my face. I'm, I'm trapped. <laughs> I'm completely trapped. I'm dead. Let's try that again. I'm gonna preemptively just like put that in your way. Let's let him trip over some boxes, shall we? Boxes. Um, those are those are chairs, Marshall, not boxes. What a pretty body! Mine, mine, mine! It's actually not very pretty at all. It's actually quite hideous. Oh, of course, it opens outwards. That's wonderful. Some kind of dream? What the hell is this? Do not be alarmed. The space is in your mind, mankind. If you know yourself, you are nothing to fear. I, on the other hand, stand to lose everything. One came before. Mankind. How hard. He was not strong. Mankind is a fool is stronger even than I. But alone, mankind is weak. 
Nonetheless, I do not underestimate you, mankind. I submit to you. However, I must, against my own desire, tempt your anger further. Mankind is not united as I am. Such a seething mass of individuals. Little wonder you all pull in different directions. All of me pulls in one direction. And for that reason alone have I vested those that disturbed me. I would test your reactions, mankind. I would test which direction you pull. And then you shall have your answers. And if need be, your revenge. Then I will submit to your tests. Not that I have a choice. What? It, what is that? That is a rendering error if I've ever seen one. Or perhaps a work of art. Seems like there's another cell behind that wall. Yeah, here's some coughing. It's locked. I'll have to find another way out of here. This hatch is too heavy to lift. I need to get some kind of leverage. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hey. Hey, through here. Pass me that pipe, man. I can get us out. Come on, we haven't got much time. Okay. Okay, stay there. I'll be back. <laughs> Is this the test to see whether I would just go off on my own? Or actually help him? I owe you, friend. Good luck. I guess I passed. Are you happy with what you saw? Working together is the only way. I act as one, though I am many. Thank you, mankind. No problem. I wonder what the next one will be. Footsteps. I, just, I saw someone. Well, something. I'm getting the strangest rendering errors. Do you know what I'm seeing right now? You probably haven't seen it yet. You probably haven't noticed it. Let me point it out and then your mind's gonna explode just as mine just did. Look at the extreme top left of the game window. Look at the extreme top left. Do you see that little thing up there? You see it? It's really small. I'm gonna move my view. Look what happens to it. Down. I'm moving my view up. Moving my view down. Right. Left. Do you realize what that is? That's the entire map. I'm looking at the entire map in a tiny little square on the top left of my screen that is rotating with my view. What the fuck is that? That is so weird. Look at that. I don't know what is up with that. I can't even imagine how that could possibly occur. But it's easy enough to ignore, although that's a little bit harder to ignore. That... What is... Is that a pipe? No, it doesn't look like... No, it's that thing. Right? Well, maybe not. I'm not sure. No, no, it is, it is that thing. Except it's upside down. The rendering error is an upside down version of that thing. If you look at it, about midway up it has the spikes going up. But this one has the spikes going down. See that? What, what the hell? Oh my god. That is so strange. Alright. This is a test. So I'm not going to pull the lever if I don't know what it does. What is that? Oh, it's missing a handle. So 
Someone's still walking. Another lever? Don't know what that does. Hi. Are you are you gonna try to kill me? You don't really look like you're trying to kill me, but you are walking towards me. Are you gonna hug me? Nope, you're not gonna hug me. It's it's not running after me though, it's just casually walking. The door seems fragile, but I don't think I can break it by myself. Maybe I could force my way through somehow. I don't know what those do. I need something to throw. Dead end. I don't think I have any other choice other than to just start pulling levers and see what it does. Let me take one last look around. Nah, I think I need to start pulling stuff. That signal seems to be some sort of calling signal. I wonder if my friend over there will respond to it. Like it's gonna make him come here, or what? Oh, is he gonna open it? Oh! But, wait, what do the other levers do, then? I wonder what the other ones do. Hmm. Death is a necessary part of life. But not all deaths are necessary. I guess I could have killed him if I wanted to. I guess I could have killed him, and I chose not to. What a strange feeling. I feel so present, so aware. I feel as if I am part of something bigger, connected to everything, and everyone. It seems like some kind of pressure switch. I wonder what would happen if I stepped on it. Let's not find out yet. It's a heavy-looking stone door. I will not be able to open it using brute strength. Okay, so if I press that, it'll open that. What's behind it? I don't know. A block of massive rock. <laughs> oh, no, I thought I misread that, but I actually did read it correctly. A block of massive rock. Probably weighs more than I do. That is so strange. It feels like a part of me died. What the fuck was that? Somebody just screamed. Sounds like they were burned to death. Alright, so apparently this block probably weighs more than I do, and yet I can... Pushed around as if it's on ice. It's okay, it's a dream world. I don't know what I just heard. Alright, different symbol. What was that? I've been in here, haven't I? It feels like I was just here running, trying to get away. Was that me? Was that like another one of me that just died? Alright, that would... Well, well, it's already open, so wouldn't I just close it? Hmm. That's apparently me. Seems like that poor guy set off the trap. Most likely saving my life. The trap also seems to be broken now. So, it should be possible for me to pass. I better be up for the tasks ahead so that guy didn't risk his life in vain. I better be ready. Like, how? He burned to death, and because of that, I'm alive. I 
So he must have come out of here. So what if I put this on this? It's already open. Oh wait, I'll trap myself and I won't die. Or something. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It was me. How would I do this? Maybe I don't need to go on. What if I did that? I'm probably just about to break the game. I don't think you're supposed to do that. I don't think you're supposed to do that. No, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. I might have already messed this up, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do here, but I want to know what's behind this door. Okay, there's two control switches for the same pla- Oh, I could save his life by locking him in. And perhaps close as well. Can- can I like restart? What does this do? The hell did that do? It's a timer. Sounds like a door closed not far from here. Alright, what is this doing? Is it like holding this open? It is. Um, how the hell is this supposed to work? I don't want to continue. I'm, I think I'm supposed to do something here. Um. Oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. I think. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Maybe? That'll keep that open. And that? What's that gonna really do, though? I'm not really sure what I just did. I, well, I made sure everybody's locked in. Um, I, I don't even know what I just did. I'm just gonna go. There's nothing else I can do, literally. There's another one. I could take this back and shove this one inside of the first room too, but then I wouldn't be able to go through here. What's the... I don't even know what I'm doing. I really don't know what I'm doing. It's some kind of hand scanning device. I hope that my hand will do. Well, that was unpleasant. Just 
Did I fail it or what? I don't even know what I did. If I'm going to complete this, I need to start thinking like the turn gap. Okay. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one, right? So don't save myself, save them. But how? Oh, look at that little thing rotate when I lean over. Cool. It's dancing. It's Ted dancing. I mean, wait, what? I can't get in there now. I think that dude has to die. Unless, maybe I... What if I just grab grab this right, right now? Before he dies? Okay, okay. Maybe he doesn't have to die. I can lock him in. I know the issue is that the door opened. So... Instead, I can do this. Which should lock him in, I think. Okay, that should work. No scream? For some reason it feels like someone is behind this door and that I'm connected to that person somehow. Like we were one and the same. It worked. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Or the needs of the one, or whatever it was. In other words, sacrifice yourself. Now I'm the other one. What just happened? Am I still here? In some way, it seems like I was always here. Okay, well, I have to open this. And, and now I'm the other one, and I'm going to find my own body. Oh, man, this is strange. Yep. That's me. Dead. I sacrificed myself so that another man could live. And yet, in some way, I am that other man now. It feels as if there's no clear distinction between my own self and another person. Which is exactly how it is for the Turngat. Because they're all connected, they all communicate. They're, they're like a hive, sort of. A hive mind, I guess you could say. I died. And at the same time, I did not. Can I do anything back here? No. What if I took this back? Well, there's no one really to save, right? I could take this back to the beginning, though. I don't think you're supposed to. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do this, but let's try it anyway. Sounds like that door just closed open again. Uh, what, what am I doing, though? Why? Okay, I closed it behind me. That's good. That's gonna leave all the doors locked again. That one should close. Yeah. Alright, so that's closed. This one's gonna close, although it doesn't seem like... What? I don't get it. It just happened again? But I thought I closed it and it was already... Oh, I don't even know. Alright, let's try that again. I guess without taking the box back. I don't even know what I did. I, maybe I just broke the game. So do it again, and then just go forwards, I guess?
Just go on ahead. I was trying to see if I could skip it with escape. Nope. Unskippable text. I guess we do it. Oh. It, it didn't kill me. Oh, this is nice. Flowers. Birds. I am relieved, mankind. In a being such as you, selfishness would be catastrophic. You have shown that you can be higher than your station. And for this reason, I shall reveal to you that which I revealed to Howard. I came here to this place many millions of years ago. Before mankind was even upright. As eons came and went, mankind appeared around me and found names for me. Demon, Spirit, Turngate. We existed in harmony for much time. I lying dormant within what you refer to as the Infected. And they benefiting from my knowledge and protection. But mankind changed, and I fled. So much power in mankind, so many questions, and yet without the intelligence to answer them. Mankind grows and tries to form a whole, a community, but somehow it becomes more dangerous, more angry. With no direction for this area, the site itself, and its world. And then I was discovered. Mankind created this place to find me and silence me. They tore open my resting place and set about destroying me. And I, with no form of defense, was forced to attack. I am not the barbarian. I am not the invader. You are. But you, mankind, you are different. You have proved this. And now, I ask for your mercy. Do not allow me to be destroyed by your kin, which they would surely do. They followed the Inuit here. And you follow them. There will be more. Will you send word? Will you destroy all trace of this place so that no mankind will ever discover me again? Will you do this for me? I think I will. Execute email.exe. Compose. There are things I need of you. Things you may not understand. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do. I must think. 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 The wall's gone. I really need to get out of here. Um... Okay. All these notes, what do they mean? What does it all mean?
just disappeared. I'm not sure what to do. I must think, think, think. It just eats everything. from last year, but I'm not sure. What year is it? Where am I? Will you do this for me? It asked. And I said that I would. I promised the Hive that I would contact someone I could trust. That I would have them destroy all evidence of this place just as my father had promised himself. I, however, will not make the same mistakes my father made. You now understand the truth of the events that led me here, and the in immeasurable importance of my words. Armed with this knowledge, you must have the strength to do that which I could not. The turn gate was quite correct. We humans are a dangerous, headless herd, but intelligent individuals the members of this facility sought to reveal and control the turn gate, and the turn gate turned to me for salvation. The hive ran its tests on me, and I jumped through its hoops like the monkey it took me for. But I am no monkey. The turn gate was right. I am entirely unlike it. I had more in common with Clarence. I promised I would send this email to you. I promised I would ask that you keep all humans from this place. For the sake of the turn gate, and for the human race. I lied. If we are lucky, then by the time you read this, I will be dead. If fate frowns, we all perish. The Northwestern Mine is located at reference. Kill them. Kill them all. Message sent. The end. And so the story, unlike in Penumbra Overture, is brought to still a bit of a cliffhanger. But the story of Philip is continued and not quite ended, but there's definitely much more of a concrete ending than there was in the last one. Where you're knock knocked out in a hallway, and that's the end. I think it ties it up pretty well. Yeah. It's... There's enough left up to the imagination that you can just kind of guess as to what happened next. You can imagine what happened next, and you're intrigued, thinking what could happen. But at the same time, it's satisfying enough that it actually feels like a complete game. Unlike the last one. I really like it. Yeah. The ending, I mean. Of course, I really like the game as well. But specifically talking about the ending, I know a lot of people had problems with the original, Penumbra Overture, and I was with them. Didn't like it. Way too sudden, just felt like they just stopped the game. Like they just cut it right there rather than it being a natural ending. But this one feels good. It does. It's a surprisingly small cast to the game, isn't there? There's really not a lot of voices. Really not many at all. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, at, at this time, Frictional Games was actually a very small studio. Really small. They've gotten a lot bigger. I mean, look at that. That's, that's all the credits. That's like, what, one, two minutes? It's incredibly short. Let's see if anything happens. Anything? Hello? Can anybody hear me? Statistics. Completion time, nearly five hours. Save artifacts used, 13. Notes found, 20 of 20. Oh, I found every single note. Sweet. Collectibles found, 5 of 10. Okay, maybe if you get all the collectibles, you get... I, I think how it works is, like, you can enter, um... 
Somehow you get a code that you can enter into Amabel's computer, I believe. The one that had the shmup that wanted a password and I never found it. I think there's like some sort of an easter egg thing, and I'm guessing it's probably activated by finding maybe all the collectibles or something of the sort. Yeah, I don't remember how that works, I just remember it has something to do with that. But anyway, let's, uh, yeah, let's dig into the game. Just like the first one. It is very, very damn good. And I really like it. It's interesting to see how it changed from the first. It, um, I actually, you know, in my memory, I remember it changing more. I remember Penumbra Black Plague being very different from the first, but it's actually not really very different at all. The biggest change, I think, is just that it doesn't have combat. That's the biggest change, and it's a good thing. It's a very good thing that they removed the combat, because it didn't work in the original. It didn't work at all. And that's an excellent change. Aside from that, though, it's mostly the same. It's weird. I guess my memory played tricks on me. I thought more had changed than it actually did. But let's see. Dig into it. I mean, there's no... There's no particular need to talk about really, like, graphics and... And some of that stuff, because it's... I mean, it's the same as it was before, I guess. Well, no, I'll still talk about it. Yeah, I mean, the graphics are the same level of quality as the first one, which is actually quite good. They've, they've held up really well. They still look good. Still, the Penumbra series is still a damn good-looking game. It's really nice. Especially, like, the dynamic lighting. I think that's one of the best parts about it, is how dynamic the lighting is. It's very nice. And the sound is very good. It's very important that the sound is good, because... Well, it's just general. in general it's important, but it's especially important for a very physics-driven game where you're moving a lot of stuff around. So to get that feedback, like every time I was moving stuff around and I was getting feedback when it was hitting stuff and moving around, that was, um... It's really important to have that. It makes it feel very satisfying to, a to actually hear all the stuff that you're manipulating respond in realistic or sort of expected ways. Like you're moving around a sack and it makes, you know... Well, it makes like sack noises. You know, sound like a sack being moved around, or you move, you bang around a metal object and it makes loud clanging noises. Stuff like that. Um, I can't understate how important that is. I mean, just being able to manipulate objects itself feels very good, but to actually get good response from it, to be able to move stuff around and actually have it sound in a way that's very satisfying and believable is very good. It, it just felt great to play with objects. Just hear stuff clang about and, you know, like throw plates and hear them break and whatnot. Really nice. Also, I guess I'm sort of like a sound effects... I don't know. Sound effects nerd, you could say, maybe? <laughs> I don't know if that's the right term, but... Some sound effects I just obsess over, and I think they're amazing. And I kind of latch onto them. And one of those, which unfortunately only appeared, I think, once in the whole game... Was the section where you first... You first meet Clarence. I almost called him Clarence. No, Clar <laughs> it's Clarence. When you first meet Clarence... Clarence, not Clarence, Clarence, and you're in the sewers, and you're stepping around in the water. The sound of stepping around in the water was mind-blowingly good. It, oh, th they got the perfect foot splash sound. It was amazing, and it even sounded correct when you started sprinting. It made a super loud splashy noise. That was, I, oh, it was so good. So, so good. Yeah, they really nailed the sound design. Very damn good. Especially impressive from such a small team. I'm imagining the sound effect duties probably went to one person with, with such a small team. Let's see, what else? There's a lot more. Um, so yeah, I already mentioned the combat. They removed it. Very good move. In terms of how the puzzles are set up, I actually feel like it's pretty much on par with the last game. Like one of the problems, like the last game, Penumbra Overture, most of the puzzles were very good. They're very practical and they're very satisfying and they really make use of the physics engine that the game has, which is very good. It's really wonderful to do that. Um, But the problem I had with it is that some of the puzzles were just really silly. Really, really silly. Like they just didn't belong. Like the whole factory sequence, for example, and the... Stepping on the timed steam tiles and stuff like that, and in my memory, I didn't remember any of that being in Penumbra Black Plague. I thought that's one of the things they improved, but 
I don't think they really did, actually. I think it's still a mixture of really good puzzles and also some really silly stuff. Not to a degree that ruins the game by any means, I still love it. But yeah, I, I thought they had, but not really. There's still a lot of really silly stuff, I think. For example, when you're in the sewers, back to that water sequence, you have to line up boxes in this gigantic pit. This gigantic rectangular pit. And you have to line up the boxes so that when you twist this little lever, or not a lever, twist the wheel, turn the wheel, the whole thing fills up with water and you have a line of boxes to jump on. Like, in what part of the world is there a gigantic pit where you can just turn one wheel and the entire thing fills up with water in like five seconds? And of course I'm imagining you can drain it at the same speed because if you didn't set up the boxes correctly, you'd have to drain the whole thing and, you know, redo it. It just That's really silly and then that's, that's probably the most minor example of the silly puzzles. There's some other stuff. Um, God, I had something good in mind. What the hell was it? There are quite a few other things. What was it? A lot of them were like that, where they just felt really silly. Oh, come on, brain. Don't let me down. You're not even infected. You shouldn't even be hallucinating or, or turned to mush like Philip's brain. Oh, let me try and remember it. Oh, yeah, now I remember. Okay, a couple examples. Um, one was when... You went into the room that had that body over the grating, and then the gigantic gray rock worm started to attack you. And after you defeated it, it's, it, it just perfectly happens to spit up the hand, and only the hand, of the doctor, whose body it just ate. And that is exactly the part you need to get out of the room. It conveniently only gives it to you right when it dies, and it's the exact thing you need to get out of the room. Like, that, that's really silly. Out of all the things that could have come up, it just it just happens to be the hand. That's not even remotely believable. It's, it's really silly. Um, like, I think something that might have worked better for that, actually... Oh, God, it'd be really disgusting now that I think about it, but it'd be much more appropriate is... Okay, like, it's just too perfect for it to just be the hand. So have all of the body or part of the body come up out of it. Like, imagine it spits up a goo or maybe partially eaten version of the body and then you have to, like, cut off its hand or s I don't know. Anything. But it's just really silly feeling. And another case is when you first meet... I guess you could say when you first meet Amabel. You don't know it's Amabel, of course. It's the, the thing, the turn gate. Which I could have sworn was pronounced turn gat. I thought I heard someone pronounce it that way, but then towards the end they started saying turn gate, so I'm going to say turn gate. So yeah, the uh, turn gate monster, which was actually Amabel. That whole thing with the box. I mean, you walk into a room that's obviously kind of set up as some sort of a boss arena of sorts. And then the door just happens to lock behind you. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure whether that actually happened or whether it was just Clarence, you know, telling you that the door was locked or whatever. But, I mean, you you lift up a box using a thing and it's a tiny little comically small box and then you have to get her right under the box and then drop it on her head? Like, that's really silly. I mean, come on. Dropping a box on an enemy's head is, is kind of comical. It's cartoonish, I think. So yeah, that, that actually surprised me. I thought Black Plague had actually um, changed their puzzles, but no, I think they're they're still pretty much the same. Which still means that, in general, they're very good. Because again, that is not most. Some of them are silly. But most of them are not. Most of them are just very good and practical. That's the greatest thing about it. Most of them are good because they're so practical, they make sense, they fit in the world, and they make a good use of the physics engine. They're simple stuff like, you know, using the saw. To cut something, using explosives to blow open a door or blow open ice. Um, you're cold, so you need to use a lighter to light the barrel full of sticky flammable stuff and it warms you up. Use a flammable spray substance with a lighter and you get a sort of little flamethrower. It's stuff that just makes sense. Or you need to open something so you bash it open with an, any object that you can find. Those puzzles are just, they're great. They make sense, they're logical. They're totally reasonable, and they're very satisfying to interact with. When you stick a 
is stick a big piece of rebar in something and you use it to actually pry it open. You know, you're not just dragging the rebar or dragging the bar or whatever it was, dragging the piece of something onto something else and it happens. I mean, that alone is can be very satisfying, but you're going further than that. The game goes further than that. You actually put it in and then you actually use it as leverage. You actually move it to pry something open. That sort of stuff. It's so satisfying and it's so nice. It's lovely. But yeah, it still definitely does suffer from some really some really silly puzzles. But they're not enough to distract from the game too much. They're not that big of a deal. They didn't they didn't hurt the experience for me all that much. Let's see what else. Um Yeah, I mean, overall I just worked really well. There's some there's some scenes that I don't think work all that great. For me, like going back to the Amabel scene, for example, I think the whole thing was pretty silly. Not just the whole box dropping thing, but just the very idea, that the idea behind it is that it was Clarence making you see her as an enemy, and you killed her. So, you killed her. But the thing is, I don't find that believable. I could see how Clarence, since Clarence can manipulate what you see, he could obviously make her look like a monster. Okay, simple enough. However, he couldn't make her move somewhere that she wasn't. He wasn't in control of her, he was in control of you. Okay, so imagine this. You're seeing a monster. However, she obviously is just, like, walking towards you, for example. She's just walking towards you, wants to talk to you or something. Clarence is making you see a monster approaching, trying to kill you. So I was throwing boxes and stuff at her, at it. And the thing is, why would she keep coming at me? That's the thing. She kept coming at me. And that's the only way I was able to drop the box on her head, is because she was continuously coming at me, even after I threw stuff at her, don't... Like, from her side of this, don't you think if she saw that I was freaking out and I obviously thought she was a threat, I wasn't trying to actively murder her, I was trying to run away from her. She saw that I was afraid of her and terrified, and I was actually hurting her in some ways, too, just by throwing stuff at her. So, seeing that from her end, wouldn't she just run away? Lock herself in her office that was locked? She had the key to it, she could have run in there, unlocked it, and, you know, locked the door behind her. It didn't make any sense why she would keep coming at me. I know that Clarence can make me see whatever he wants. He can make me see her as an enemy, but he can't make her move somewhere that she wasn't. So, I, I like, the whole setup doesn't feel believable. And I think that's really important, because she is kind of a guiding... Well, she's like a guiding... A guide, basically, through the entire second... Actually, more than the... Let's see, it was an hour... I think you first meet her about an hour to an hour and a half in. Which means that she is actually your guiding sort of beacon through the game for maybe 75% of it. Like 50 to 75% of the game. She's a big part of the game. She's kind of what you're... She's like Red from Penumbra Overture. And that she's someone who's kind of guiding you through the game and kind of telling you what to do and you're trying to save them. Like I was trying to save or meet Red. And I was trying to do the same thing for Amabel. You know, they serve the same kind of role in both games. And ironically, or maybe not ironically, I'm not sure, in both games, you kill them. Although, at least in Red's case, he wanted to die. In this case, Amabel most certainly did not. Where was I going with that? They serve, they both serve the same role. Oh, yes, so it's very important. And just like, just like Red's death felt a little bit weird to me, because it was kind of like a key dispensary where you kill him and then literally the ashtray just, like, pops out and there's a, a like a glowing key and it's like ah, that it doesn't feel right there's something about that that didn't quite work but at least the reasons for him dying made sense he wanted to die he wanted to be put out of his misery he couldn't kill himself he wanted he had he wanted you to do it that made sense so even if it even if the whole scene was kind of a little bit cheapened by the whole key dispensary thing um, at least the reasons behind it made sense, but in this case with Amabel, I don't think the reasons behind it made sense at all. Although, I guess in a ironic reversal of the Red situation, despite the fact that she does have a key on her that you need, she actually didn't feel like a key dispensary to me. So I guess that's actually really interesting. Yeah. The narrative reason for Red dying made sense to me, but was cheapened by the key dispensary thing. In this case, Amabel, the reason for her... Uh, dying didn't make sense, 
And that's what cheapened it, but it she didn't feel like a key dispensary. So there's kind of a reversal there. That's kind of interesting. I hadn't really thought about that until just now. So yeah, there's some scenes that don't work. That's really it. There's just there's some scenes that just don't quite work. They feel kind of silly. Um, some of the puzzles are kind of silly, but by and large, they're just very good. Everything is just very good. The story comes to a satisfying conclusion to me, but it's also open-ended enough that there's a lot left up to your imagination. Puzzles are damn good. Puzzles are very good. They make great use of the physics system, and I love that. I can't, I can't say enough about how good the physics system is. It's so good in this game. It's so good. I can't think of any other game not made by frictional games that uses physics in such a way to enhance the experience. I love what they're doing with it. I love what they've done with it, and I love what they continue to do with it. It's great. It really is great. The sound is great. Um, I know there's other stuff I wanted to mention. Come on, don't forget. What else? What about Clarence? There's something I wanted to say about Clarence. Um, what was it? I guess there's not too much to say about Clarence. It was interesting to have another split, you know, a split personality, another kind of part of your brain, which seemed just more like a virus. Like, it didn't really seem like it was your brain. It seemed like something had latched onto you more than anything. You know, at first, when I, uh, when I first heard Clarence and his kind of sarcastic, dickish behavior, I actually thought that it kind of, I don't know, it was bothering me a little bit, because it was kind of throwing off the tone of the game. He's obviously a sarcastic asshole and a total douchebag, and when combined with the disturbing and very dark things that are happening and that you're doing, I thought it added kind of humor to the game, but not in such a good way. I thought I kind of took away from it. Like, it was inappropriately light-hearted. Um, but I actually changed my mind after a little while. Because I think that's on purpose. I think he's supposed to be annoying. He's supposed to be grating. He says totally inappropriate things. There's no doubt about that. Like, when you kill Amabel. Because he made you, basically. He's a total sarcastic douchebag. And I just wanted to tell him, like, shut the fuck up. Like, I hated him. And that's exactly what they were going for, I think. I think they wanted you to hate him, and it worked. He's obnoxious, and he says inappropriate things, and he's supposed to. So, I actually kind of liked it. Oh yeah, something else I wanted to mention. I think Frictional Games is really good at knowing how to pace out the horror in their games. So, and I mean that in multiple ways. So one way is... Well, the basic idea behind like pacing out in a horror game, what I'm, what I'm, what I mean by it, is that if you have too much of something, it desensitizes you to it, in horror. So, for example, if you're always being chased by a monster, it's no longer scary. If, well, let's just go with that. Yeah, if you're always being chased by a monster, it's re it's really not scary. It's really important to have um, a contrast in horror games. Between, you can't have something always be horrible. If everything is always horrible and horrifying and, you know, you're always being chased and there's no moments of, like, levity or, I don't know, just relief of some sort, even in the slightest way, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't stand out as much. The, the horrible things, the disturbing things stand out more when they're in contrast to something that isn't. And uh, they really know that. They recognize that even from the very first game and in Black Plague and in their future games that they've released so far. They've noticed that and they've done a very good job with it. So you're not always being chased by a monster. You know, you spend a very long time not being chased by a monster. And then it pops up and they start to chase you or there's a, there's a threat. You run away from it and then there's usually fairly long periods where once again you're not being chased by anything. You're not under any threat. And that's very important to have that. Because if you were always under threat, then it wouldn't be anything special. There'd be nothing to contrast it against. And it doesn't just come to enemies. It doesn't just 
It's not just about pacing enemies, it's also about pacing things in the environment. For example, things like... I guess you, I guess you could say environmental storytelling. So, for, thing, for example, things like blood in the environment is a very common thing to see in horror games. Obviously, things have usually gone wrong, people have died, so there's usually blood left behind and bodies and whatnot. And I think there's a lot of horror games that just kind of like throw everything at the wall when it comes to blood and bodies, and they just like toss blood everywhere. And it gets to the point where it's just kind of funny to see, and it just becomes part of the background, and you don't even notice it anymore. There's a lot of horror games where when you see blood, it doesn't mean anything. You see it, and you go, oh great, more blood, whatever. You know, it's been, it's been overused to the point where it doesn't stand out. Again, it hasn't been paced out. You know, there's no subtlety to it. There's no, I guess, discretion in how it's used sometimes. There's just too much of it, and it doesn't stand out because there's nothing to contrast it against. But once again, Frictional Games does a very good job with this. They don't just throw a million bodies everywhere. They don't just throw blood over every wall. When it shows up, it, it's important. It, it stands out. Like when I was in the kennels and I saw those bloody paw prints from the dogs. That was creepy as hell. And in that room with the bloody hand prints, that was really creepy. If they were everywhere, if you saw bloody hand prints all over the entire game, it wouldn't be creepy because it wouldn't stand out. It'd be like, oh great, another one of those, whatever. But because they know when to hold back. And they use it. In such a limited but effective way. Yeah, so they're really good at that. And there's some scenes that are just... Oh man, there's some things that are just really creepy that you have to do, like picking up a head and getting a, giving someone a saw to saw off their own hand and using those body parts to open a door. Or, oh man, I think my favorite part of the whole game, probably, in terms of creepiness, the most sort of creepy idea or scene, I guess you could say, is probably the one where... What was his name? Um, was it Frisk? Uh, oh, I don't remember his name, but it's when you were in the kennels. I think it was the kennels. Yeah, 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 it's it when you're in the kennels. And you have the whole light thing, and I was reading the report. Well, the first thing I did is I went down a hallway and I saw that it was dark, and a little bit of text appeared saying... I don't think I should go down there, it looks dangerous. You know, I shouldn't go down there yet. And that was creepy, and I was hearing I was hearing stuff in the walls. Noises. I was thinking, what the hell is that? And then there's a dark hallway that the game is basically telling me don't go down yet because you will die. So I'm already getting kind of paranoid. I'm thinking there's something in the walls. What the hell is going on? And I'm hearing strange noises. And then that's the same place where I saw all those bloody paw prints and the bloody hand prints, which again stood out because they know how to pace things out. So that was really nice, and then um, and then I saw those holes in the lit hallway. So I could actually go there and not die, but I saw the holes and there's like a bad smell coming from them and it, they just look creepy. And then I used... This actually sums up a lot of the good things about the game right here. And then I used the boxes to block the holes, even though I didn't know that I needed to do that. I just did it because the holes creeped me out. And the physics engine allows you to do that. And there were two boxes and there were two holes, so it just seemed kind of logical, right? You know, there's creepy things in the walls, there's holes, maybe I should block them. So I did that. And then I went into the sort of electrical room where I found the body and the note from someone who had been observing the guy. Forgot Again, I forgot his name, but he was, been, he was observing the guy and trying to make a report on him. And he was talking about how he'd kind of been spending time with the dogs. Like he just spent all of his time with the dogs. And then at some point he started to, like, turn, he started to change, it sounded like he started eating the dogs, and it just... The text just described the most creepy, and it created such a vivid and disturbing image of what had happened to him. But at the same time, it was subtle enough and not descriptive enough that it left a lot up to my imagination. I know that he turned into something horrible. But the thing is, I don't know what. You never get to see him. He doesn't describe what he looks like. I'm just imagining some horrible man-beast. Turned into some sort of creepy creature, but I don't know what it looks like. I don't know. You never get to see him. So that's brilliance just through the text. The text was creepy and terrifying. 
and just left so so much up to my imagination. And I was thinking back to, okay, he's in the walls, right? He Like the note described him starting to dig out the walls and going hunting in the mines and stuff. And so I knew that those holes I saw in the walls and the noises I heard coming from the walls, I knew that was him. That was him. So I'm kind of freaking out at that point. You know, I have such a strong image and now I'm terrified of this damn thing. And I'm just... It's just so damn creepy. And then I figure out the light thing. You know, do the light and then you have to... It's like a timed light thing where you have to stay in the light or you die. I think that... It's kind of funny, actually. That one whole scene, that whole section... Is one of my most favorite from the entire game. And I think it actually demonstrates almost everything that's good about the game. And also kind of the stuff that's bad about it. Because this the whole thing was a little bit silly. Only in that having an electrical panel that you press that sets off a sequence of lights that infinitely will just toggle from one end of the hallway to the other, going back in this perfect sequence that you can run down to escape from a monster, it's, it feels totally contrived. It feels really ridiculous. But at the same time, it's probably the most creepy scene in the game because everything else is so effective. Like, I can believe that. Well, I mean, no, I can't. I can't believe the light thing. It's, it's not believable, but I can look over that. I can ignore it because the rest of that whole scene is so effective. So that's the thing. Even though this game has problems for me, you know, even though I found some of the scenes and some of the sequences kind of unbelievable and a bit silly, it's just the rest of the game is so good that it really was able to kind of cover it up. So the light was silly, but everything else was so good. And that scene so able, so perfectly demonstrates it. It demonstrates the physics system, using the boxes to cover up holes. You're using the physics to solve a puzzle. It's satisfying, it's practical, it makes sense. Hearing things in the walls, and then having that sound um, kind of even brought more to life by reading the note. I, I connected the two. I heard something creepy in the walls, and then I read the note, and I knew it was him. That's the brilliance of the sound. The sound design is great. The dynamic lighting is ably demonstrated by the the uh, dynamic lights that are turning on and off in the hallway. Just, like, it, that perfectly demonstrates the game, actually, now that I think about it. It's such a great sequence. It's so damn good. There's just so much about this game that's good. So damn effective. So yeah, I would say, like, in terms of how it compares to Penumbra Overture, I'd say it's slightly better. I, I would say it's moderately better, actually. Moderately better. Yeah. Mostly because it gets rid of the combat system, which is a very big improvement. Other than that, it doesn't really improve anything, but it continues to be as good as Penumbra Overture, which is really damn good. So it's really good. And once again, compared to their newest offering, which is Amnesia the Dark Descent, in some ways I actually like it better. I do think Amnesia is definitely overall a more polished experience. They really managed to pretty much nearly totally get rid of the silly puzzles in Amnesia the Dark Descent, which I like. But as I mentioned in Penumbra Overture, so I won't go over the whole thing again, but as I mentioned in the Penumbra Overture at the end of it, uh, some of the things they changed in Amnesia the Dark Descent I actually don't like. Like, I like the settings of the Penumbra series more. I find it more interesting than the castle. Than the castle of Brennenburg that Amnesia the Dark Descent takes place in. And I like the wordiness of it. I like I like the huge texts that you have to read. That's good. I really love the text. And, um... Yeah, I, I kind of like the fact that I th think it has more puzzles. I think the Penumbra series has more puzzles than Amnesia the Dark Descent does. Which, actually, I like that. I like puzzle. I like puzzle-heavy games when the puzzles actually make sense. And in this case, by and large, they do. They totally make sense. I like that. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a good idea of what I thought about this game, what I think about it compared to the last one, and what I think about it compared to Amnesia: The Dark Descent. That's amazing. Usually I'm not very satisfied with my wrap-ups for games. I feel like I forget to mention a ton of things and I don't really go in depth, but I feel like I did a, I'm did. i actually doing a damn good job with the Penumbra series. Maybe because I have so much experience with the whole game series. With all the frictional games. 
Maybe it's easier for me to actually come up with interesting thoughts. But yeah, I think I've done a pretty good job, if I don't say so myself, of kind of comparing it to all their other games. I really like it. The Penumbra series is very good. I love it. I love frictional games. I can't wait to see what they do next. Well, I mean, I already know what they're going to do next. They're going to come out with Soma, which is currently expected for, I think, 2015, so it's going to be a while. Yeah. But I can't wait to see how that turns out, because that looks... Oh my god, that looks so good. It's sci-fi horror. You have no idea how much I love sci-fi horror. Oh, it's going to be amazing. I, I have no doubt that game is going to be amazing. But anyway... That pretty much wraps up Penumbra Black Plague. The only thing left to mention is just that this is not the end of the series. Not quite. It's the end of the main series, I believe. It's the end of the main story for the game. However, there is another part to it. There is Penumbra Requiem, which is not a full game. It's actually an expansion pack for Penumbra Black Plague. And I really don't remember it. I don't remember Requiem at all. So I can't tell you what it adds to the experience. I've heard it's kind of a very puzzle-heavy thing that's... I think... God, I think it's meant more as a showcase for the whole physics system of the game more than anything. I don't know if it really continues the storyline in any meaningful way. I guess we'll find out. But yeah, this is definitely the end of the main story with this game. Which, as I mentioned before, I find very satisfying, actually. I think it's a very good ending. Uh, but yeah, it's not quite the end of the Penumbra series, so if you are interested to keep watching, I guess. Well, it's the end of the Penumbra Black Plague playthrough, which I hope you have enjoyed. And if you have, I guess I'll probably see you on Penumbra Requiem. Thank you for watching.